Welcome to Green TV, the show that focuses on independent Green Party and Green Party candidates and positive Green New Deal solutions, eco jobs for the economy, solar jobs, wind jobs, rail jobs, geothermal jobs, heating and cooling geothermal jobs, efficiency jobs, weatherization jobs. With us on Green TV today is the second Congressional District Chairman of the Independent Green Party of Virginia, retired Navy Commodore and my friend, Kenny Golden. Kenny, thank you so much for joining us today on Green TV. Good to be here. Kenny, let's, uh, let's start off and tell the audience uh, a bit about you. Where, where were you born and where did you grow up? Well, I'm a native Virginian and I was, believe it or not, I was born on Christmas Eve in a log cabin just outside Richmond, which is a great story in itself. And uh, my mother still claims that I'm the worst Christmas present she ever got. <laughs> oh, go on, yeah. So, <laughs> at any rate, uh, uh, I grew up there in, in Blackstone, although I lived in several other places, in Ashland and Fredericksburg and Bowling Green, so uh, we lived all over the state. And, uh, my dad was from Richmond, so uh, we lived always close by. So then I attended Barham College, where we were the national junior college champions in 1968. Playing football? And, uh, yes, playing football. And uh, the interesting thing about that is eight of those ball players played for the Marshall team. I almost played for Marshall, as a matter of fact. And uh, they were killed in the Marshall airplane crash. I remember that real tragedy and then uh, attended the University of Virginia where I was roommates with my good friend George Allen, former Senator Allen. Uh, so uh, and then uh, spent 31 years in the Navy as a Navy pilot. Hold up just a Sorry. second Kenny, as an old football player myself, what position did you play in football? I was a defensive end uh, in college. In high school I was a running back. Now you were at your playing weight in those days, Kenny. What, uh, how tall were you? What'd you weigh? Six two and uh, two hundred and uh, about forty five pounds. Oh my goodness! <laughs> two forty five. And when yep. would that have been, Kenny? What What were the years you were playing at the University of Virginia? Nineteen seventy and seventy one were the years I played at the University of Virginia. Oh, and and the, uh, the best game you recall? Wow. It was the worst game that we had while I was there. We got beat by Michigan, 53 to three or something. Oh, Kenny, I, I said the best game, not. <laughs> I said the best game, not the worst. <laughs> oh, we had several games. We beat William and Murray when they were ranked in the country, and they had, they had played several good ball games. That's where Lou Holtz was a coach at William and Murray. Sure. Uh, so, uh, you know, when we beat the uh, Pokies. My uh, junior year at Blacksburg, seven to nothing, which was kind of exciting. So, Kenny, you went from playing football uh, with a former U.S. senator, or at that time, future U.S. senator, uh, and uh, how did you end up going in the Navy? Were you in ROTC when you were in college, uh, or no? I was drafted, and uh, even though I had a zipper on one of my legs, uh, I still was able to go ahead and enlist because I felt like I needed to serve because so many of my friends served and I just felt like it was important enough to serve. So I did. So 6'2", 242, you, you probably had to lose a little weight there, didn't you, Kenny? Went, went down to two and a quarter. <laughs> and so then you went to uh, Navy Officer Training School. That's right, in Pensacola, Florida the old officer and Delman type thing, and uh, then uh, got my wings in 74, got married in 74, went back right to Key West and did a couple other things, and I was gone. Oh my. All over the country, all over the world. And you, uh, uh, tell, tell us a few Navy stories, uh, Independent Green Party, second congressional district chairman, uh, Commodore, retired Navy, Kenny Golden, tell us a few Navy stories, Kenny. Well, the most harrowing thing was uh, in a uh, dark night in 1977, we were chasing a Russian submarine off the coast of Charleston and uh, lost a tail rotor in a hover. 
actually crashed in the water off of Charleston. So that was a that was an interesting uh, interesting time. Kenny, where all did you serve uh, in the Navy that that you can uh, you can tell us about? Uh, uh, you know, I've been to your house and I saw that one amazing picture of all of these uh, uh, ships uh, in formation that uh, you you were a part of. Where all did you s serve? Well, I served as a uh, ship's captain in Japan, and I was on both the East Coast and the West Coast. I served in, uh, on carriers on both the East and West Coast, and then I had command of a task force here in Norfolk, and then my last assignment, I was the uh, commander of Amphibious Task Force West, which was 10 ships, I'm sorry, seven ships, 10,000 sailors and marine. How in the world do you control a group that, or, or do you oversee or manage a, a group uh, that large, uh, uh, Commander Golden? That was a, uh, that was a tough assignment. And, uh, I had a good staff. I had a, a, a good deputy named Tommy Bellissimo, who was a terrific guy, and he did a good job with my chief of staff. And we just had a really good staff. and. Uh, and also very good captains. I had seven really good captains. Now, Kenny, after you uh, went ahead and retired from the Navy, um, we at some point hooked up uh, with the Independent Green Party, and you were a uh, candidate, uh, our endorsed, nominated candidate for Congress, uh, and then uh, would later run for city council. What drew you to, uh, to politics? You've also served in leadership roles in one of the state's uh, larger parties. Yes, I was the uh, chairman of the Virginia Beach Republican Party uh, here in uh, 2007, 2008, 2009. And in 2009, we won the largest victory we ever won down here. We won every single seat. And uh, we elected Bob McDonald governor, uh, Bill Bowling, lieutenant governor, and Ken Cuccinelli as attorney general. So in all the delegate seats and both senators. And of course, the Independent Green Party of Virginia, during the last governor race early on in that, reached out to uh, Lieutenant Governor Bob Bowling to uh, run as an Independent Green Party candidate. There were some meetings that occurred with uh, Lieutenant Governor, Independent Green Party leadership, uh, where those possibilities uh, were explored. Kenny, what would you, I want to ask you, what would you think uh, would be the most valuable thing that you've learned in your in your civic and uh, work and political work uh, here in Virginia since you retired from the Navy? I think the most important thing is stick to the uh, principles that you believe in and, uh, you know, take some time to decide what you're going to support and what you're not going to support and then be very plain spoken about it and so that people can understand you. Also, uh, get some help to learn how to speak to people. There's a friend of mine here that uh, does that, Chris Kettner, and uh, he is terrific. And, uh, you know, you just need to understand how to be concise. And the most important thing is somebody asks you a question, you look them back in the face and give them an answer. You don't pontificate, you don't go off the subject. You answer the question first, and then if you want to elaborate, go ahead. You're watching Green TV uh, with uh, Kenny Golden, the Independent Green Party 2nd Congressional District Chairman. I'm Kerry Campbell. We thank you so much for tuning in today. Of course, the Independent Green Party is dedicated to more trains, less traffic, more candidates, less apathy, fiscally conservative, and socially responsible. Kenny, in 2015, I, I am an independent candidate for Braddock District Supervisor. Uh, Fairfax County Board of Supervisors of uh, the Independent Green Party already has several endorsed candidates for House of Delegates. Uh, among them, of course, Joe Odo, the state chairman of the Independent Green Party, Gail Farrell Parker running for chair, Fairfax County Board of Supervisors. Gail Farrell Parker, of course, is the uh, state vice chair of the Independent Green Party, the only woman in the history of Virginia to be on the ballot statewide twice for U.S. Senate. And Janet Murphy, 
uh, running for uh, House of Delegates. Terry Modlin, the Independent Green Party, also running for House of Delegates. And Mouse Jones, running down in the 63rd District, uh, Petersburg, Virginia, for House of Delegates. Just some of the candidates that we have out there. And of course, I don't want to forget uh, Lieutenant Colonel Albert Burkhardt, uh, chair uh, of the Virginia Independent Green Party in the 4th Congressional District. Albert Burkhart running for County Board of Supervisors in Isle of Wight County. Uh, Kenny, as we look to 2015, um, with your experience in, in politics, the Independent Green Party would love to see you consider running for office again. What are the, uh, what are the possibilities, Ken? Well, I have to decide how much the divorce is going to cost me. You know, I kind of couch that against the, the cost of running. So, oh, you know, my goodness. There. Your, so your, your wife has been patient, your, your mother-in-law patient. <laughs> um, Absolutely. So what, uh, what, what are you excited about? What races uh, look good in Virginia Beach uh, in that area? Are there local elections this year in Virginia Beach? Yes, there's a, a state center. A uh, seat that's going to be up. Uh, Senator Frank Wagner is uh, is up for re-election, and uh, he's uh, he's got uh, some good ideas on the environment uh, and some and some bad ideas. But he's also uh, a controversial figure in that he uh, helped create this traffic accountability uh, office, which a lot of people aren't happy about because it doesn't give them. The direct capability to participate, and that's uh, that's my problem with it. Fairfax County, uh, for example, the state's largest county in Virginia, has about four members of the state senate. Of course, all 40 members of the Virginia state senate are up for election this year, as are all 100 members of the House of Delegates. Uh, Fairfax County has about uh, eight of the 100 members of the House of Delegates, plus or minus. Uh, in so Virginia Beach, I'm guessing would have maybe two or three members of the House of Delegates, maybe even four. Kenny, no, we that'll be next year, and it'll be uh, we'll have six. Uh, we have six seats down here, and then of course we have two senators. As well, we have the seventh and the eighth. So six, six for House of Delegates in Virginia Beach, and and um, uh, say again, how many Senate? Two. Two for state senate. Yeah. Well, of course, uh, the state election, uh, state elections for uh, the state legislature are very important. With ninety billion dollars of tax revenue coming into the state in the biennial budget, about forty-six uh, and forty-four billion, uh, the respective budgets uh, for the year. Uh, talk to us a little bit, Ken, about your priorities as second congressional district chairman of the Independent Green Party. Uh, on the fiscal side, the Independent Green Party, a fiscally conservative uh, Green Party, Ken, what are some of the key issues that you see us needing to focus on uh, budgetary-wise in 20, 2015 and 2016 for the state of Virginia? Well, of course, the third crossing here is something that we have to, uh, we have to fix. Uh, our, our road system, with the only two ways to get across the James River being, well, actually, there's three ways. You have to go way up to go across the James River Bridge. But the Monger Merrimack Tunnel and then the Hampton Roads uh, Bridge Tunnel. Uh, that Hampton Roads Bridge Tunnel is a big tie up break for 64. Monger Merrimack, not so bad, but it still ties into 64 to produce. So we were hoping to get uh, the capability to move outside to the west by going to 460, which would have been northwest, the northwest border. And it would have helped relieve traffic, which is important here to give us some, some ability to move traffic, but it's also important from a standpoint of uh, you, if you have a catastrophic hurricane like the situation we had in Katrina, uh, we, would be, uh, we would be hard stressed here to be able to get all the traffic out that we needed to, so that will be a problem for us. So those things are concerns environmentally. Uh, the light rail system, which by the way, I'm not in favor of down here because it does not follow the routes that it should, one, and two, it is only a system that is used for hauling people. And I can tell you right now, as long as we have systems that only move people, we're never going to have success with light rail. We have to do what the Germans have done and what the Japanese have done, and that's have a multi-use system 
that transfers goods and services when it's not moving people. In other words, all during the night, in Dresden, for example, they move parts for factories that they have. I think it's a Volkswagen factory there. And, uh, and during the day, of course, they move people back and forth. And then after they get people to work, then they start moving parts again. So those are the types of things that we need to do. And I think what's so important about the Green Party is, is our emphasis on rail traffic and how it relates to other modes of transportation in our American infrastructure. We need to get that right, and we still don't have that right. And you're absolutely right, Kenny Golden, Independent Green Party 2nd Congressional District Chair in Virginia. Uh, the Independent Green Party and the Green Party have always emphasized that rail is the positive solution, and it is a national security issue. Just like you just mentioned, uh, Kenny Golden, the need in an emergency to be able to evacuate many people uh, High-speed rail, maglev rail, was the positive solution there. It would allow us, for example, uh, in Washington, D.C., to evacuate the entire national leadership in 15 minutes, getting them from Washington, D.C. to Richmond, Virginia. High-speed maglev are trains as fast as planes, uh, 350 miles an hour, and of course there is this new proposal uh, that uh, the Japanese Northeast Maglev, the Japanese have suggested they will fund five billion dollars up front to, to build that underground Maglev rail system uh, that would enhance uh, national security. And of course, every dollar invested in building rail, studies show, creates twenty dollars of economic growth and increasing the values of our homes, our businesses and communities and creating revenue for our schools, our police and our fire departments. Kenny, how can they improve in North Fork uh, on the light rail now? What are some of the positive solutions there? Well, if you look at uh, where it's situated, first of all, it needs to cross the river and it needs to be a Hampton Road solution. It doesn't need to be just a Norfolk, Virginia Beach solution, although those are important. Uh, I didn't support it because it did not go to Oceana, it did not go to Norfolk Naval Base, and it did not go to the International Airport. And those are the three places it must go. But more importantly, you've got the National Industrial Terminal here, NIT, one of the largest ports in America, and light rail doesn't interface with that. And it should and could, and it would make sense to do that if we followed the Dresden example, and you're welcome to look that up on the internet, and see how it works. One of the biggest mistakes we made, the metro system, which is a great system in Washington, D.C., is we did not look far enough ahead and make that a dual-use system. If you make it a dual-use system, it comes closer to helping pay for itself well, you make a very good point. Folks, you're watching Green TV with Independent Green Party 2nd Congressional District Chairman, that's Virginia Beach, uh, Kenny Golden. Kenny Golden is a retired Navy Commodore. Uh, Kenny, just by the way, explain the difference to us, would you please, between an admiral, a captain, and a Commodore? Well, of course, a captain is the same thing as a full bird colonel in the Marine Corps, the Army, and the Air Force. A Commodore is a Navy captain who's had command of a group of ships or a group of squadrons, and he has captains working for him. Uh, it's the next step up would, of course, be one star, but uh, I didn't win that beauty contest. I was uh, the runner-up. <laughs> I also want to bring it back to you. We're talking about the German Federal Railroads there a moment with Dresden. And of course, the German Federal Railroad is a nationally run railroad that has made a robust profit. Three billion dollars just last year. Repeatedly makes excellent money and proves the point that rail makes money. Rail is profitable and also enforces, reinforces your point about a dual-use system. Kenny, I want to bring us back now also to using your expect expertise as a man, a Navy man like my father who uh, sailed uh, the world's oceans, uh, pollution. 
a problem in our oceans. Just how bad is it, Kenny, and what are the positive solutions? Well, I think we're working on positive solutions for, for air. And the more renewables we get, the more successful we make them. And I think that's crucial. We cannot, we cannot go out and, and spend a great deal of money on, on renewable solutions that don't work. We have to have renewable solutions that work, that are, that are monetarily successful. And then we will be successful. But the other thing, and I think it's a, a big problem, and worldwide, I just saw a piece on it, and it came up as a result of the, uh, the crash of the uh, Air Asian airliner, is the tremendous pace of plastic trash in the ocean. We have got to do something about that. And uh, the United States Navy, 20 years ago, started to make improvements on our systems. And now we don't throw uh, plastic trash in the ocean at all, period. We collect that. We melt it down. We make it into pylons, as a matter of fact. But And all the trash that's for like garbage, for example, is thrown over the side. But that is taken care of by the environment. It's not overwhelmed. But plastics is a huge problem in the environment throughout the planet. And they're having problems in this search area down there because they're seeing so much plastic in the ocean. It was a huge problem in the Mediterranean. For example, Surabaya was where I had uh, my, my flagship. I was down there for an exercise. And the trash coming out of the river in Surabaya was so vile, so much that I had to shut down an engineering plant after running it eight hours just to clean out the scuppers and switch to another plant. So after three days, I said, we're getting out of here. I'm not going to do this anymore. Kenny, I want to pick up on uh, a couple of uh, things that you remarked on there uh, about profitability. Uh, and this is a story from Julia Piper at uh, Slating Green. Jobs in solar power generation increased by 201 uh, percent in the last year, uh, while jobs in other areas of energy have gone down. Now, you were speaking to this uh, great problem of plastics in, in the ocean now. Uh, we have looked around, I know, in our family for a viable alternative for biodegradable plastic. Uh, I was just reading a, a study on that yesterday. Um, we, that is something, a direction, a positive solution that we need to go in. What are some of the uh, other positive solutions that you see the Navy, uh, as a retired Navy man, uh, doing for the environment, Kenny? Well, I think the important thing is uh, water is going to become a crucial problem worldwide. And, uh, and we've done a great job in the Navy of uh, figuring out ways to purify water. Uh, but the, the neatest way is to not pollute it to begin with. Now, of course, there, there are things that you're not going to be able to do, but your solution of making plastics so that they don't last 200 years is crucial. And I've always been a proponent of every piece of household trash that leaves your home should be either renewable or reusable in some way, shape, or form or fashion. And when you talk about the uh, success of renewable energy in uh, Virginia, uh, one needs to make the point that more, and you and I are both boys of the coal country, uh, grew up in coal country, uh, more Virginians today work in the solar industry, 11,000, uh, then work in coal. So uh, solar and the renewables are, are making profits. 95% uh, of all new energy production created in the last year were in renewables. 74% uh, uh, in solar, 20% uh, in geothermal, and 1% uh, 20% uh, uh, in wind, 1% in geothermal. Kenny Golden, Independent Green Party, 2nd Congr Congressional District Chairman. We're already down to just three and a half minutes left to go in the show. Let's uh, speculate, as so many, it's a, it's a part I enjoy, and as so many folks do, looking ahead to the presidential sweet stakes of 2016, Kenny. Three names come up uh, for the Green Party. The 2012 nominee, Dr. Jill Stein, 
medical doctor, Harvard uh, Medical School professor. Uh, Dr. Stein uh, was, is uh, the woman who received more votes for president on the ballot in the United States than uh, anyone else in history. Uh, Dr. Stein was, uh, worked in a collaborative, inclusive, positive fashion uh, during 2012 uh, in that presidential race for the Green Party. Also being discussed is the independent senator, U.S. Senator from Vermont, Bernie Sanders. There's a Green Party website, a Green Party petition, a Green Party Facebook page out there, all of them urging him to run as a uh, member of the Green Party. And then uh, Michael Bloomberg, the uh, former independent uh, mayor of New York City, three-term governor and philanthropist, uh, just this week released a, a new study on the dangers of climate change and uh, the urgent need to take uh, positive action. Uh, he released that study with some members of the uh, previous uh, administration, the presidential administration. Kenny, who are you looking at? Now, you're a conservative, independent Green. Are there any conservatives out there uh, who come to your mind that uh, might, might be names worthy of note as a possible Green Party candidate for president in 2016? No, I think uh, Bernie Sanders running up there in the Senate seat is, is probably as good a candidate as you're going to run, to run for a, not a national office, uh, even though he is a U.S. senator. Uh, I think that's probably as good as you're going to get. The, the thing I would encourage people to do is to look for candidates that are going to look at the environment and come up with realistic solutions uh, that get us, you know, through the next 50 years because that's crucial. And, uh, and I think we also need to be realistic about how we apply green energy. For example, uh, the Navy has tried a, a solution of green fuels, and I'm not in favor of that because it's the technology has not moved forward enough to allow us to produce green fuels at a, at a quick enough level to make mm. it uh, cost effective. So Kenny, we're running to we're, up with another way to propel Navy ships. I'm to sorry, Ken, not the answer. Kenny, we're running out of time here. We've only got a few seconds, and doggone it, I want you had a meeting with the incumbent congressman today, but we're going to have to have you back on another show to talk about that. We're already, where did the time go, Kenny? Kenny Golden, the Independent Green Party 2nd Congressional District Chairman, that's Virginia Beach, uh, retired Navy Commodore. Kenny Golden, an absolute pleasure to have you on Green TV today. We thank you so much for coming on the show and look forward to having seeing you again next time. And, all right, looking forward to seeing you in D.C. All right, Kenny. And I'm Kerry Campbell. Join us again next time on Green TV.